Yes, it is true. The Black Ace Hockey Podcast is back in action. I'm your co-host, Blaine Adams. I'm right here, as always, with your co-host, Nick Jenks Jenkins. What's going on, man? Hockey season is upon us. The next time we talk, we will have actual NHL games to discuss. So um, exciting time of year. The, the teams are starting to form, right? We are just kind of touching that subject before we started recording. But um, we are close. It's like it's like Christmas Eve, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's cool to see because like we're in that lull time where I think teams are starting to lock in and actually not bring uh, some crazy injury reports out now like all that sort of summer so um you know most of those guys have been healed up or got the feels like everybody's getting a surgery uh, on their like knees or shoulders or elbows and they're repaired within a month i'm like all i can think is is when a team reports is oh this guy had successful surgery i'm thinking the guys in there with a knife just like cutting off some tissue and then just you know your legs open and shit the guys in there with like some pliers and a, and a screwdriver that's all i think about but no they're like in there with like fucking looks like chopsticks you know in there like yeah I don't, I don't know what they do jane i don't i i'm too poor to get that type of surgery i i got the, the second hand doctor that's slicing <laughs> open my body they get they get the uh, best surgeons only yeah. um i mean look at how quickly some of these guys come back from injury yeah, it's like, like Eichel's, after- Eichel's major neck thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. After the Stanley Cup, it's like, yeah, this guy uh, played through a punctured lung, broken rib, <laughs> two dislocated knees. You're like, I don't see how he, he was standing. Like, uh, right. I mean, I right. don't know uh, what they're doing behind the scenes. But, you know, the, this past uh, month, there, there was a Tier 1 um, tournament in Pittsburgh, PA, uh, kind of sponsored by the USHL. So a lot of the top end teams were, most of the top end teams were were in the uh, city and state. Um, and dude, they, they have like trainers. They got like the boxes in the back. They're wheeling around uh, like equipment stuff. You know, I'm, I'm talking with some of the trainers in there and they're like, yeah, like that's their full-time job, like to be a trainer for that team. So it's, it's kind of crazy. Like once you start moving up, um, you know, big bodies banging all night long, you know, down in the corners, people are getting hurt. So like they, they need that shit. Um, parents paying a lot of fucking money for it. So, um, it's, it's cool. It's cool to see like some of that aspect that I've never I'm sure that's going on throughout the NHL and other leagues also. Um, but yeah, this show is going to be a little different. We were talking about it before, Jenks. Um, not a lot of hockey news, so we're going to cover the trophies. You know, we're we're bringing our crystal ball out. Nick Nostradamus out here just predicting the futures. Um, yeah, all the major trophies: Norris, Calder, MVP, Rocket, um, East West champs, and then a couple of surprise teams of the year for both NCAA and the NCAA. I'm sure uh, we'll brainstorm and, and make up something along the way as well to keep the board. Um, outside of that stuff, Jenks, what's going? What what was this past week for you guys? Any any uh, any exciting news? Nothing to report this week. I mean, it's kind of the same for everybody. I, I think hockey season is uh, upon us, especially for high school too. Um, we start our season this week. We've got two games this week. Um, couple tough matchups but i'll have more to report back on that expect your uh your weekly pihl update from your resident (laughs) resident coach we need it we need it Uh, it's gonna be a fun year it's 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 fun because i think the talent is going up like everywhere um Mm -hmm. as far as like you know the the i'd say the tier one and triple a um kind of scene just from refing some of those it seems like it's it's starting to pick up a little bit, um, and it you know uh, as as organizations expand and get more kids, it gets a little watered down. But um, yeah, it, it's it's good to see some of some of the high end kids get get some. Uh, we're gonna start with the Calder Trophy predictions. Uh, I'm gonna toss it over to you first, Jenks, and then I'm gonna cover the first thing for the MVP. 
but your pick for the Calder Trophy winner for the 2024-2025 season. So I think this is going to be a really exciting season because there's a lot of young talent that we've got coming in. Um, you know, we got an early glimpse of Lane Hudson for the Canadians at the end of last season. Um, he's already put together some highlights. So he's going to be a betting favorite for sure. Um, obviously, Celebrini's up there um, being the first overall pick coming into the league. And probably his teammate, Will Smith, is going to get a little bit of buzz too. Uh, coming out of college, um, you know, the Sharks have been pretty painfully bad for so long. Who knows? Maybe they're actually fun to watch this year. I doubt it, but there's a chance. If you would have asked me a month ago, I wouldn't even have had this guy on my radar. But Matt Bay Michkov has put together some highlight reel tapes through the preseason already. And I've seen two or three clips, and it's like this guy is NHL ready. He's played in the KHL for a couple of seasons now. He looks like the real deal. As much as I hate to admit a flyer is going to be good as a Penguins fan, Matt Bay Mitch Cobb is probably my pick for the call there this year. Oh, he's my pick as well. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> Shouldn't I have let me go for his foul. I did some digging. I did some digging <laughs> as well. So a comparison for y'all out there that don't know the KHL that well. A lot of like Russian players, when they come over here, they usually play one to three seasons in the KHL. They call it the Super League. You, you think think of the Malkin clip, me Super League, two years. Well, I go last. You freaking bitch, Sidney Crosby. Like, I go last. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I did some digging, and Mishkov, when he plays a full season in the KHL, had 41 points. Um, no, 47, 41 points in 50 games, I believe. The person closest to that, 47 points, and I think he played 53 games. Take a guess who that was. His last season before moving to the NHL from the KHL. Has he been in the NHL a while? Give me yes. a hint. Yes. He's was that Ovi? on three teams. Oh, well, he's been on three teams. Oh, man. He's been in the two NHL teams, for a while. Two teams. Two teams. Still in the NHL? Yes. Been on two teams. Oh, I, would, I wouldn't have thought of him. I was, I was trying to come up with all the obs I could possibly think of. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, I think the only way to be Russian is have an OV at the end, so... It's yeah. it's insane, but like that's a great comparison where like these kids and, and young talent coming out of Russia, like have that middle of the pack like points, and they come over here and like oh the English and Canadians and Swedish are so soft, we're just gonna bury them points. So um, I think if they find a good pairing out there and maybe maybe put is Konechny still playing for the Flyers? Yeah, yep. I mean maybe put him and Konechny on a line. Like Mishkov, yeah, he's he's a strong boy. I'm sure he's built different. I'm sure he wrestled bears over there and whatever in Serbia or I think they train different in the winter. So it's maybe maybe they put them together and, and wreak some havoc on a few teams. Um, it's gonna be fun for him to watch. Like you said, I there's so much pressure on the first overall pick that it's very hard for me to pick. Um, Celebrini, just because I don't think he's on the caliber of, say, Connor Bedard. Um, so I, I, I just think the pressure may get to him. Um, hometown boy, you know, all of it. Everybody think all oh, pressure thrive off of pressure, but it, it does impact you over, over you know, a course of the season. Yeah, and I think a lot of people too. I, I agree with everything you're saying. A lot of people too expect that guy to just explode in the NHL like Connor McDavid yeah. I mean even Bedard Bedard is for sure a generational talent and he just got stuck on a pretty rough team and it, it takes time to adapt to the size and speed of the NHL uh, especially coming out of junior so I know Celebrini played with men in the NCAA so maybe that helps him a little bit but let's let's temper our expectations for a, a first year player yeah I mean I I agree I agree man it's Unless you're Sidney Crosby or McDavid, like I feel like it's so hard 
um, in today's game to break that 100 marker in your first year. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, even Crosby didn't win it. Ovi won it. So it's, it's like you have to be this next level guy that I, I just think we're not going to see for a while. Even Connor Bedard started off slow. I, I, I think he'll get to that, like, Nathan McKinnon level. Um, but, you know, it's just, you can't have two generational players back to back. Jim. You just, I mean, it's, what's the, what's the stats on that? They, I mean, 06, we had one, and then 2015 with McDavid, or 14 with McDavid. Like, you can't have another one for a while. It's, it's, we just had one last year. Everybody likes to use the word generational talent. Every first overall pick somehow gets called a generational talent at some point. It's like, okay, this, sure, they can be an elite player and probably a superstar to some degree, but you're not a generational talent. That's well, well, it's just the corporate speech. That's what they say to get, get everybody wound up, and then they buy, like, $1,200 uh, Fanatics authentic jersey. And yep, sell the jerseys. Two yep. weeks, it rips. So it's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. If you buy a Fanatics jersey, I don't feel bad for you. Sorry. I, it's so hard for me to spend more than $100 on a jersey, man, because, like, if it's not stitched, like you, what buy, buy from China? Like, I don't know. I don't know what what I'm doing out there. But moving on, next trophy. I'll start it off so you don't ruin my pick. The MVP. <laughs> I think they call it the Ted Lindsay. I don't know. That's a guess. The Ted Lindsay Award, possibly. Even though I have no idea who Ted Lindsay is. Um, the MVP is is. It's a hard subject. I mean, do we stray against McDavid here? Do we stray against Nathan McKinnon? What does McDavid have to do for the MVP to be stripped from him? I don't know is the question to that, or is the answer to that question. Does McDavid, he put up 150, 140 points this year? 100 assists? Like, what else does this man have to do for the Oilers to make it to the, to the Stanley Cup? Now, it's kind of like the same sentence of, like, we see this high-end talent for so long. So long, like Crosby, like, like LeBron, like, we got to switch it up. we got to give it, hand it around the league a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm picking the Jack Hughes from the New Jersey Devils. I think wow. this is going to be his career year, Jenks. He hasn't played a full season in six years in the NHL. Hasn't played all 82 games yet. I think this is his full season career year. Jack Hughes is going to come back strong from his injury last year. His brother's playing with him. The New Jersey Devils, they got all the Hughes luck. He's on the cover of NHL 25. I picked him to go to the Stanley Cup this year. So, with all that said, I'm thinking Jack Daddy bringing Ted Lindsay back to his house. I love the pick. I, I'm all here for it. Hey, we just had a little sidebar. We just had our fantasy hockey draft yesterday, and uh, your boy ended up with Jack Hughes. So, uh, if that ends up happening, there's a good chance that I win the cup. So, I'm, I'm happy with that pick. I like your pick. All right. So... You kind of said it. It's McDavid's trophy to lose. So that's no fun to pick McDavid. McKinnon won it last year. He's always in the conversation, right? I think there's probably one other player who always gets talked about as one of the best players in the league, and he's always in the conversation for it. Um, but he hasn't won it yet. And if he can repeat or exceed the number of goals he scored last year, we're probably having that conversation that he's probably one of the favorites to win again. So I'm going to say my pick for the, the Ted Lindsay this year is going to be Austin Matthews. Wow. I don't, know if, I don't know that he gets that 70 goal mark, but he's sure going to try. He is now the captain of that team. His boy Mitch stuck around, so assuming that him and Mitch play together again this year, uh, he's going to have some good support there. Um, yeah, I'm, he's going to be my uh, my non-McDavid or McKinnon <laughs> pick for the MVP this year. 
That's that's an interesting pick. And did you see um, kind of sidebar real quick? The NHL has that new Netflix series coming out. Yeah, um, isn't it on Amazon? Right? Is it on Amazon? I don't. I don't know. I, I think it's Amazon. It. Yeah. So uh, coming out on Amazon, I guess. No, no sponsorship. I don't really care who. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so uh, but they showed like little clips, like from. Alex Nylander and McDavid and uh, all these guys they followed around all season, Brady to Ch- or not to Ch- Brady, uh, Matt to Chuck. Um, they asked uh, Nylander like uh, something about like, do you thrive under pressure? And he's just sat back. Guy looks like a boss. His neck is about as big as my head. It's it's insane. And he's just like, yeah, thrive under pressure. Guys, a guys a legend. Although you saw. He does not thrive under pressure. And now we know what that conversation on the bench was between him, Matthews, and Marner because they showed it in the little trailer. It's just like, stop bitching. Like, put the puck in the back of the net. Stop whining. And Mitch is throwing his gloves around, throwing a fit on the bench. Where's my 12 million? So, is it Toronto's year, Jenks? Is that what you're saying? Oh, I don't know that I'd go that far to call it Toronto's year because I get a lot of enjoyment out of them losing the first round. Right. So <laughs> I think it could be uh, – certainly they could have a good regular season. They've done so a couple of times now. And if Matthews is a big contributor to that, I think he's definitely in the conversation even if they don't win it all. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be an interesting watch. Um, I'm pretty excited to actually watch that uh, that new series coming out. Moving on to the next trophy, we got Rocket Richard, top goal scorer in the NHL. Um, Who do you got for the five? I mean, four, five, Rocket Richard trophy. So this is uh, this is a boring pick, but I don't see how he doesn't get it at this point. And I just talked about him, and for all of the same reasons, I think it's going to be Austin Matthews. I mean, his shot is just unbelievable. Um, he's got a lot of strong support there. Um, I obviously picked him to be MVP, so I believe he's going to have a good year. And that good year would involve him scoring a lot of goals because that's what Toronto needs. I I think if we have this conversation again in a couple of years, Bedard's certainly going to be up there with his shot. Um, But for for this year, I'm I'm going Matthews again to take home both the uh, Rocket and the Ted Lindsay now. So you think the the added C on his chest is going to gonna really elevate his game i Toronto? think that c i think that c is worth at least five goals <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> gotcha he'll score all five in the first game and then call it a day got it yeah and then they'll strip the c away from him and that's it all right all right i'm i'm going against the grain here going against the grain i'm picking a guy that last year sniffed it he was right there he he smelled it and I think that's really what he was trying to do. Just trying to will his team into the NHL Stanley Cup final. Leon Dreisaitl of the Edmonton Oilers. I think him and McDavid are going to say, screw it. Like, we, we've been there. We, we've done it. 19 years in a row, we have we've took a garbage-ass team to the, to the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. <laughs> 19 years in a row, we've, we've bled, sweat, broken bones, dislocated fingers. I think this year, he says, I'm putting the puck in the back of the freaking net 195 times. 195 times, I'm going down the ice and hearing that goal light come on. 195 times, I'm crossing the blue line and I'm not passing. Because guess who's on the other side of the ice? Zach Hyman, Mr. Garbage Man, that's not going to score more than 20 goals this year. Leon Dreisaitl for the Rocket Richard 2024. I'm here for it. I love the pick. I'm going to ask you the exact opposite question. Do you not think that McDavid has a chance to win it? I I know we've both picked other guys, but... Do we think McDavid t- says, you know what, I just got to shoot the puck more? I think he's a better facilitator. I think yeah, when, that's a when good point. he yeah. wants to turn it on, he turns it on. But he doesn't have that European mindset of, like, I'm actually better than you. He's a humble guy. 
So like he's like, I'd rather make somebody else look good rather than myself. Whereas in the in Europe, in Russia, they're like, me good. I go I go score, put puck in net. That's that's all they that's all they care about. <laughs> that's all they know. That's how they put bread on the table over there. That's it. Perfect. I'm bread good with that. And radishes. <laughs> that's all they do over there. Bread and tur- radishes. Turnips. Turnips, I think it is. Either one of them. Come on now. They survive nukes. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever, man. Not not a political podcast. We're just straight down the middle. No. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Moving on to the Norris Trophy. Best defenseman or most valuable defenseman, if you want to put it in another term, of the year 2024-2025. Jenks, give me your pick. So, I don't know if this is something that's been achieved before, and if it has, it probably hasn't been done in a very long time. Uh, I didn't do the research to look at it. It probably has happened before. I don't know why I'm saying that. Uh, There are a lot of good defensemen who have done this in the past. But, you know, I just think that this player uh, is is overdue. Um, He finally stepped into his own last year. And had a really big season. I think his team is primed to be good again. Um, I'm going with Quinn Hughes to repeat Ooh, as okay. the Norris pick. I just think, you know, he's still a young guy. That team is very young and talented. I think they take another step this year, and he's going to be a big reason why. He's their captain, too. So maybe I've got a, a fixation on captains here today. I don't know why. But <laughs> I'm maybe going maybe. Quinn Hughes. Quinn Hughes to repeat Norris. Captain Jenks is picking all the captains. Uh, I, I'm not surprised at all, to be honest with you. Maybe you guys sit down at a round table and just uh, shake hands every every month. Um, just just as a side note, I did look it up because I was curious. And uh, Nick Lidstrom won the Norris seven times in eight years. <laughs> Holy shit. The NHL is like, we literally can't pick anybody else. Between between 2001 and 2008. So I guess that's six times in seven years, but still, Jesus. Well, yeah, the Penguins had to shut him down. They, they won the Stanley Cup, and the NHL was like, oh, man, this guy's old. Holy God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so my pick for the Norris, I think, uh, I mean, you, you touched on it. Quinn Hughes, Kale McCarr, I think are, are pretty – Pretty standard operation. Adam Fox, uh, Victor Hedman. I'm picking a guy. I see my MVPs. They actually are MVP. Not just like fan favorite or like the NHL is like, oh, who has the most points this year? Let's make it easy. I'm picking a guy that had 85 points last year. Willed his team into the NHL, Stanley, Stanley Cup playoffs. And they didn't really have anybody on the front end. They Name one person on the Nashville Predators. I can't. Stammer. But he just came this year. Couldn't tell you anybody else. Roman Yossi for the Norris. 85 points last year. I think with the additions of Marshall So, Brady, I don't even know how to say his last name. Skyji? Skyji? Uh, you who who? Oh, what? Skate Brady, you? Brady Shea. Shea. Have you have <laughs> you pause pause there? Have you seen the Saturday Night Live thing where it's talk? They're talking about hockey players and how to pronounce the names. No. And they, they who was it? They had um, I think it was Chance the Rapper was on. Oh but yeah, that one. He was okay, okay. He yeah, he's he's the sideline reporter, and they're like, "Can you turn around?" And it's Brady Shea, and it's. He's like, yeah, that's an S, a K, and a J all next to each other. So that's a no from me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's just like, why, why make it hard on us? Like, why do you have to have a, a hard last yeah. name? Like, your last name is Jenkins. Mine's is Adams. Like, you can't get any more simple than that. Really, you truly can't. Uh, maybe Smith, but I don't know. Uh, but just touching back on it, I think Shea, Stammer, and Marsha so 
all three of those additions, all three have history in the Stanley Cup Finals, Stanley Cup Playoffs. I think maybe if you keep Stammer healthy, put him on long-term IR, right off the rip, maybe break his leg or something. I don't know. But the guy's a metal man below the knee. So I, it's their year. I think it's a Nashville Predators year to, to go further than the last couple of years. They just signed UC Soros to a major 8x8. 8x8 is a Buffalo move. Who knows if he's going to be any good this year. We'll see. But Roman Yossi for the Norris Trophy. Um, the next team or, say, Black Ace Hockey Award, I'd say, is the surprise team of the year. Not really a trophy you hand out. Um, I'd say this falls in line with some of the Jack Adams um, award picks, uh, like coaching-wise. Um, but who is your surprise team of the year in the NHL? It's a good question. There are a lot of teams that I think it's so when I when you, when we when we decided we were going to talk about this, I'm thinking about it from the perspective of like give me a team who has been like just consistently missing the playoffs, consistently underperforming. I think it's time that they take a step. And as I I'm thinking about it, you know, I I was taking a good hard look at Ottawa. And they've brought in a lot of young talent over the years. They've made trades to build up their decor. They finally got a, hopefully got a goaltender this year in Allmark, which has been, I mean, that killed them last year. They couldn't get a save to save their lives. Um, so, you know, I hope the development of a lot of their young guys continue. Um, they've got to play better defensively. They've got to get some saves. Um, but I think the Ottawa Senators are going to surprise this year. I think they get into the playoffs. And I don't know that it's it may not be as a wild card team either. They might slot in the, the third spot there in um what is that, the Atlantic division, I believe. Um yeah, I think it's the Atlantic. I only know Metro for Penn, so <laughs> that's it. Well, I, I, I think they're gonna really take a step. I, I think Allmark has proved that he can make some saves. Um, I know Boston plays a defensive system, but he won the Vesna two years ago now. Or was it was it last year or two years? Two years ago, because Hellebuck won it last year. Um, you know, he he got he was on some bad teams before. Um, I think he just needs a little bit of help um, so that he's not getting shelled every night. But I think he's a good goaltender. They'll get it done for him. Uh, Sanderson's going to take another step. You still got Brady Kachuk, and you got Stutzla and uh, some other young guys in like Shane Pinto and Patterson. Stutzla, yeah. How would you say it? Stutzel. Yeah, it's it's Stutzla. I don't care. We're in America. Okay, it in America we'll say Stutzel, like a <laughs> like American, got it. like an American. <laughs> Yeah, I, they're they're my pick for surprise team this year. I think they're going to get into the playoffs and uh, be a tough team to play against. So you don't think? See, we we've, we've seen this from Ottawa before, where they bring in all this young talent, or they draft all this young talent and kind of toss everybody, and then they bring in a bully that won the Stanley Cup or at least mm -hmm. won uh, enough rounds to to peak interest around the league. Um, that would be like Matt Murray. And they sent that guy packing as pretty much as soon as he got there. Broken legs, broken toes, hamstrings, groin. I don't even know if Matt Murray plays in the NHL anymore, to be honest with you. I don't even know where he's at. He could be surfing on a beach. So you're, not <laughs> you're not concerned. You're not I think concerned. Murray's still on LTIR. He's been on LTIR for three years now. <laughs> yeah, like, you're not concerned about patterns with the Ottawa Senators and goaltending? I guess if you'd be concerned about that, like, okay, we we saw enough of Matt Murray in Pittsburgh to know, like, all you got to do is shoot glove and it's going in. So I don't know that he was the answer even when they traded for him. I think a lot of the guys that they've added over the years have been, like, you know, kind of like an, a 1A, not like a definite 1 in that. Okay. Um, and then they've ended up flopping. I think Allmark 
has proven that he can make the big saves. Um, and I think part of that has to be they got to tighten up defensively too. Ottawa allows a lot of shots and a lot of high danger shots too. And they've got too many good defensemen in that team to be doing that. So a yeah. little bit of coaching. Um, you've got to expect your goaltender that you just acquired to get the job done as well. So I think it's going to be a combination of team effort and goaltending, but I, I think they break the curse here. All right. I mean, I, I, I would like to see the Ottawa Senators in the mix, considering I, I do like Brady the Chuck and way he plays that literally everybody. Um, and he still looks like a child, so it's, it's very strange out there. <laughs> um, so, so uh, but my, my surprise team of the year, I think isn't, if you look back the last maybe one, two, wouldn't be that much of a, uh, a stretch to, to pick them as a surprise team now. But the Red Wings, considering all the talent that they have from the young guns, and then they're mixing in, like, you, you think Larkin, you think Patty Kane, they just hired Tarasenko. Um, now, where it gets questionable, and, and this is why they're in the surprise team of the year, maybe wild card, maybe, maybe uh, first team out of the playoffs. They're goaltenders. They have all the, it's the land of the misfits. Everybody that all the teams didn't want over there. They got Alex Leon. I'm at, I was actually pretty high on Alex Leon down in Lyon, whatever you want to, every, however you want to say that Y in there. Uh, down, down in Florida, they got Campbell. (laughs) Who knows? The guy, the guy puts his paddle down and somehow it, it goes through it. Uh, they got this Huso kid. Now, I think that that's going to be their starter. He's had some injuries lately, so who knows what's going to happen moving into the start of the season. But And they also have Cam Talbot. Again, the Oilers pretty much trashed that man. So, who knows what's going to happen in between the pipes, but if they figure it out, I think they're going to go with tandem goaltender setup, as most of the NHL does now. I think they might have a chance to at least squeak in the playoffs. And it would be very, very weird to have the Red Wings back in because that's scary. I don't care who you are. I completely agree. I I considered picking Detroit too, so I'm kind of glad we picked different teams just for the sake of conversation. It's the same uh, brain wave here. (laughs) Great tandem we got going on here. I I think your point about the goaltending is right. Um, They've got a couple of options there. Um, all three of those guys have had good stretches in the past. Um, there's issues with consistency, but if one of those guys can step up and prove that he's a number one and grab the reins in net, they've kind of got a pretty solid team. Otherwise, they're, yeah. I mean, they've got a lot of good young players too. They've got depth with Patty Kane, um, superstar depth with Patty Kane, just signed Cider to a huge contract. So they're good on the back end. I, I think that team is one that for sure can take a step this year. Yeah, and, and I'm looking at their D pair here. It's like, Ole Mata used to be, I know we hate Ole Mata, but he did have cancer. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's give him a break here. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's been long enough. Um, he was a top D pair in, in Pittsburgh. So having him on your third line is, is kind of crazy to, to, to really think about. I mean, he played on that London Knights team with, with Max Domi, I believe. So it's, it's like... He's good enough to be there, and honestly, I think he's a little underrated, but um, you got to put it together for, for Detroit. I think there's a lot of talent. A lot, a lot of things can happen. The guy that does the gritty after he scores, I, I couldn't tell you who his name is. I just see the videos. <laughs> I love it. Whatever. You do you. Do you. Get, get, your, get your name out there. But... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens this year as far as uh, those under, underperforming teams. Um, moving on to the main course, what the people really want to know, Jenks, who to bet on, who the futures are going on. We are doing East-West champs. Who's coming out of the West for you? Well, if we're basing this off of uh, logic, I would have to say it's got to be Colorado, considering that uh, my pick for Stanley Cup is the Avalanche. So for consistency, we're going to say the Avalanche are coming out for all the reasons that we talked about last podcast. You know, we don't have to go too deep into it, but they've got 
one of the best forwards, arguably the best forward after McDavid, and the best defenseman in the game right now. So if they can just if uh, Georgiev can have a solid year in net and uh, the rest of the team can stay healthy, um, they're my pick. I think they're they're always a strong team to win the Western Conference. So go Abs. Go Abs. <laughs> Um, <laughs> like hitting somebody with go bills after after you bills fans just say go bills just for the sake of saying go bills it's like, it's like <laughs> see ya go bills yeah all right. Later, dude. it's like it's like a random wednesday in june and people are like go bills it's like <laughs> <laughs> like what are we doing <laughs> um my pick i think is 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 kind of on the back of everybody's mind you know canada hasn't seen the cup in 19 billion years, everybody says, oh, Toronto's going to win it. But Toronto has to go through freaking the Transformers over there. They're never going to get through. I'm sorry, Toronto, you're never getting through. You, you've got Pens, Caps, you've got the Flyers now that are going to be in the mix. The Canucks, Vancouver, the city that protests to destruction is going to be coming out of the West. I think if they can figure out how to keep their goaltender's healthy. They got the team. They got JT Miller, daddy. Call Mr. Consistency. Mr. Pittsburgh, 100 points a year? And he's like 95 years old. I feel like he's been in the NHL forever. I'm so glad Tampa got rid of him because now he's lighting the West on fire. I think if you can get Brock and Elias Pettersson to figure out their star, star power, star potential, I think you really got a team. Quinn Hughes, like you said, you already have him for his Norris pick. I just think this team's pretty complete overall. They definitely were hurt by Demko being being injured in, in the playoffs. I think if he wasn't injured, it would have been them last year. So I'm picking them this year. I think Quinn Hughes is like, I'm on the cover of the, of, of the EA 25 NHL video game. I'm going to be the man this year. So I, I'm just, I have a good vibe out there for Canada. But I just don't think they're going to win it. I just think that that team's going to come out of the, the West. Ah, okay. You're already previewing the, the yeah. Eastern pick a little bit. You don't think they're winning. You just think they're getting there. Oh. Okay. Okay. I'm rolling straight into the East with my pick. Like last pod, the New Jersey Devils are coming out of the East, and the New Jersey Devils are going to win the Cup this year. I just think the other Hughes brothers – are going to come together. It's going to be the Blues brothers over there. You know, maybe they dress all in black this season, a revenge season, Jack Hughes career year. I think it's going to show. I'm not going to repeat everything I said last pod. But I do think it's going to be the New Jersey Devils out east. What a story that would be if if you had Quinn on one side and Jack and Luke on the other side in the Stanley Cup final. I would, be I would be shocked if there's not a camera on the Hughes uh, family this year. There, oh, there was going to be for sure. Right. You can, you can guarantee that. Um, I like that pick. I, I think they're probably a sleeper pick for me uh, to come out of the East. Um, I, I'm a little bit hesitant to pick them myself because they burned me last year on a, uh, I had a, I had the Devils on a futures pick before the season even started to win the Cup last year, and uh, 17 injuries later and bad goaltending, and they didn't even get a they didn't even sniff it. So, um, I I think if they stay healthy this year, I really really like that pick. Um, so my pick out of the East, kind of always in the conversation. Um, they've been They've been up and down um, for many years. I think the last couple of years, they've been a powerhouse a little bit. And the big question mark is, can Shesterkin find the top of his game and ride it? Because he he was really good in the playoffs last year. He had a up and down regular season. And when he was down, Johnny Quick was able to come in and save the day. But I don't know that he can be counted on to keep doing that. So... I think the biggest concern is the goaltending consistency, but um, I, I think his confidence will come back. He'll find his game. The Rangers are just deep. They've got high-end talent in Panarin. Kreider's like always a 40-goal scorer. Savannah Jad lights it up too. 
Um, they've got Mr. Freight Train Truba back there just taking people out of the game with conkeys left and right. Yeah, that guy. And then don't forget about uh, fan favorite Matt Rempe, who's going to be in there just looking to pound people's faces in. So uh, I think the Rangers are, are talented enough, physical enough, deep enough that they can get it done. So I've got them coming out of the East. Yeah, I think with uh, Rempe being um, kind of the force on that team now, uh, you know, I've, I've, you know, rumor mill is turning. I, I think Truba might be on his way out because, yeah. to be honest with you, if I, was, if I was the coach, GM, I'm seeing this guy literally be the greatest human off the ice. But once mm-hmm. he become once uh, obviously ice on ice and off ice, two different people. On ice, he's the worst human to ever exist. Guy literally <laughs> runs people for no reason and takes jaws apart. Dirtiest person ever. But I think you have Rempe now that kind of can control like, hey, we got the big guy on the bench. We'll let him loose. Don't, don't let him eat. We can feed him if you want. But I, I don't know. We'll see how the season plays out. Maybe they ditch Truba towards the end. Um, maybe mix up the lines, like kind of like a, like a Eve situation, like, hey, we don't need this guy anymore. But I do agree. Igor needs to figure it the fuck out and uh, keep it rolling uh, all the way through the playoffs. Last pick. We're going college because this is a college hockey podcast. NCAA Frozen Four. Al Jenks, I know you're like, oh my gosh, it's easy. Denver BUBC, Denver BUBC, Denver BU Quinnipiac, Quinnipiac, BC. But I don't like doing that. I want to hear who is your fourth team in that you want to see this year that maybe missed out on it last year or you just would like them in. And I would like them in. Well, I don't know that uh, based on my fandom, I don't know that I would say I would like this team in. But (laughs) I sure think they're a really good team. And I think they are certainly in the conversation. They're going to get to the Frozen Four. I think it's, are they going to win it or not? Um, It's Michigan State. I mean, they ran the Big Ten last year. They, Michigan State's got a history of being Really good, really bad. They just kind of ride the cycle a little bit. But yeah. holy crap, man, that team is loaded. They've got that huge Russian defenseman, um, Lev Shunov, I think is how you say it. Literally just looking up what his, uh, oh, they have a ton. It's, yeah, I mean, if you if you look at this team, like I'm, I've got the roster pulled up right now, and I'm looking at their scoring from last season. Freshman, top top scorers, freshman, freshman, sophomore, sophomore. There's a junior. There's another freshman in there. I, yeah. This team is coming back strong, and they did really well last year. They're going, and they're not to mention their goaltender, who is a already drafted into the NHL. I think by Detroit. Um, I'd have to verify that, but he was a freshman last year. This team is going to be loaded. They are. Probably they're easily the favorite to win the Big Ten. They're probably a favorite to go to the Frozen Four, and they should be in consideration for a favorite to win the national championship. So, my pick, Michigan State. Yeah, I was just looking at the roster, and they got somebody from the Pittsburgh PA on the team, Austin uh, Orvets, I think is how you say his name. Played for the Pittsburgh Pines, elite. So, um. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see see some of these hometown guys get get the shot at the big leagues, in the big cities. So, yeah, good luck to them. My pick this year, <sighs> Kale McCarr. Ever heard of him? You ever heard of that guy? He has a younger Sounds brother. Familiar. He has a younger brother. Oh wow, Taylor McCarr. Double name, gender neutral because we're we're right down the middle on the path. Now. He plays for Maine. The Maine, I think it's Black Bears. Don't quote me on it. It's some sort of bear. That team, I think, is, is, is so close to being 
top 10 caliber. They were 10 last year. They're 12 this year at the beginning of the season. I just think if they can figure out how to actually score points, this Taylor McCarr kid, it's a senior year, maybe, maybe him and Kale were like, hey, big bro, how do you shoot the puck? Maybe they were like that this summer. Um, the average height, Jenks, I looked at this. The average height is six one and a half. That monsters. They got they got the the, the what what's the Space Jam people? Uh the villains in Space Jam. The Monstars? They got the Monstars what? for for a full <laughs> team. And I love seeing non American goalies. That that just means they're sending people o- over in uh Uzbekistan, and they're like, where is the U-17 triple B goalie that is just nasty and nobody's ever heard of, and he's like seven foot, but, you know, he has like no left hand. I want that guy. That guy is going to be my goaltender because somehow he's playing hockey. and That's, that's just how it is. You just pick them because they got names that run off your shoulders. So I think Maine's going to squeak into the Frozen Four. I'd love to see them in. I love, love, love their color scheme with that baby blue and white. So Maine is my super, super, super sleeper um, activated hibernation pick. <laughs> I like it. I'm here for it. Great it's, pick. It's got to be tough, but we'll see if that one actually comes true. Um, but outside of that, I mean, hockey news-wise, again, Pretty pretty slow week, you know, mainly focused on preseason. You know, we touched on the NIL last week and in, in the CHL. I think it came out like uh they're gonna be gonna try to do a um a USHL CHL best on best game or tournament. Um I think that came out we didn't touch on. So I, I like seeing some of that because it's kinda like the PGA and live. Or like they know each other exist, but none of them want to like touch each other. Like, dude, it's it's the game. It's a game. Yeah, it's a game. It's a game. Holy shit! Figured it out. It's just a game. Oh my god. <laughs> so like, it's cool to see some of these things actually happen, um, and especially because they're all around the same age, like sixteen to twenty or sixteen to twenty-one, right? Yeah, that's the the typical junior age is sixteen to twenty. So yeah, they're it's it, they're just competing leagues, and it's always been we're in two parallel paths. We never intersect, and we don't play each other. And this is the way it is. So you know, with the way that the U.S. development program has gone over the years, um, they're getting a lot of media attention and building a reputation for being a legit way to grow prospects and. The CHL has always been considered the best prospect league in the world. Um, so I think this is just way exciting for, for junior hockey in general. Let's say, you know, let's let's put the program up against the best in the CHL and see how it goes. You know, I, I always say it's a, it's an interesting time to be good in hockey, right? To be yep. on some of the top teams because there is an infinite amount of ways and an infinite amount of teams to be seen. Like you uh-huh. don't have to be at these tournaments like busting balls and like sucking on thumbs in the lobbies of and parents. <laughs> it's just like you don't have to do that anymore. And you know what I mean? Like everybody that's ever gone to any sort of tournament had to sit there while some sixty year old just talking like, Oh, our junior league's great. We just started two years ago and blah blah blah. blah. Okay. You're not the OHL, I don't care. Get out of here. So I think it's a it's a it's a pretty pretty interesting live in, in the hockey world, especially now that we're kind of both still in it and both still active. Maybe maybe I'll see you at the top, Jinx. Uh, you know, maybe you'll get to the NCAA and I'll still be in the minors. But maybe they toss me on the lines, JFL, just fucking lines, baby. That's it. That's all I want. That's all you. you <laughs> you're not interested in repping. You just want the lines. Nope, nope. I don't want to be yelled at. I'm just up. Oh, good. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to yell at you as a line. I hope we get you for one of our high school games this year. I'm going to yell at you all game yeah. long. Tip, no ice, no ice. Keep it moving. I got I got a roast on. Keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, any any last thoughts for the people out there, Jenks? 
I hope everybody's uh, excited for the season. I know I sure am. Um, be firing it up next week. I think we're starting with the the uh, this European crap that the NHL is starting to implement at the yeah. beginning of the season. That Sabers Devils over in Europe. I think it's in Czech. Something like that. I don't know. Hey, it's your it's your uh, your pick to win the cup. I don't know. I mean, Sabers are good for the first two weeks, so like I'm sure they'll be undefeated for like the first ten games. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Yeah, man, hockey season's upon us. I'm excited. Um, stay tuned. Excited to uh, break it all down as things unfold here. Yeah, make sure to follow us on on Instagram, on the Spotify, and YouTube Black Ace Hockey Podcasts on all four three all three. Um, yeah, and look forward to some more content this year. Uh, we'll be hopefully doing a lot, a lot more. Or not a lot, I'd say a step up from last year. We're trying to take a step up, moving forward. One step at a time. Yeah, yeah I can't skip two steps because that's how knees and, and TLs, BCLs, and MCLs from your resident doctor are torn. You can't do that, especially if you don't stretch. Then, then your groin, hip flexors, everything in there, all the science in your thigh is toast. Anyways, guys. My name is Blaine Adams. I'm right here as always with your co-host, Nick. Thanks. Thank you. Well, out of here.